congratulations to you both on, on the film. Um, James, you're the connective tissue in this yeah. franchise. Did you expect to be the connective tissue? Um, no, I didn't I didn't really expect to. I, I, I guess I knew like maybe six or seven months after and Scott called me and they were like, yeah, we're going to write the sequel for you. And I was pretty, I don't know, I was pretty honored, pretty psyched to be able to do it. And then also, like, let's be honest, I'm the only character that lives from the first one. So, <laughs> you know, there you go. But not living doesn't necessarily mean you can't come back in a horror film. Yeah, uh, I guess that's true, too. Yeah. Shannon, what drew you to do this? What was the appeal for you? Uh, I liked the, the I liked the character and what she was fighting for. Um, I, and I really loved Karen, the director. When we met, that just made me, it made me excited. At first, I was, you know, a little unsure because these films can be draining, emotionally draining. And, uh, but yeah, because the character was grounded in a reality, some kind of a reality, though it is a, 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 a terrifying one as well, I think that, I think that it was, yeah, it was nice to kind of be in a drama. I, I felt like I was in a drama almost, you know, and uh, just loved Karen. What was it that Kieran said to you? What was sort of his vision or pitch for the film when, when you both spoke with him? When, when, he, when we talked, he said that he was really passionate about focusing on the story first, and that the story was first. And a lot of people say that. Everyone throws that around a lot. But he actually, I really believed him. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really, really believed him when he said it. And it was just a feeling. And we talked about... We just talked about life. We talked about all kinds of things. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. And James, for you. That I did. I was doing the movie. Whoever was directing it at that point. So like he got hired after I did actually. So I just honestly I got really lucky that it was that it was him to be able to carry this. You know. How is uh first of all does Deputy So and So have a, do you have a name for Deputy So and So? Has anyone told you a name? name? Yes. Do, do, do you have I, a private like a personal history for him that you've made up? No, I don't have a personal history. I was t I, I I based the character on that Chris Farley SNL sketch, the Chris Farley show, where he would just be really nervous around celebrities because that's what I was doing in the first one, and because that's all I had to do was just be the comedic relief, and then to flesh it out into a real character, I was like, uh oh, this is a way bigger piece to bite off, you know, than I had anticipated. No, I don't really have I don't have a name for him. I'm sure it's something really terrible. <laughs> How to you has he changed going from the first film to the second? Uh, probably a lot of guilt, remorse, probably a little bit darkened and haunted a little bit more. You know, like that sort of the, youth, the youthful sort of vigor is maybe gone, but he's a little, I think, haunted from what happened in the first movie. Mm. What were, for both of you, what were the most uh, unsettling scenes to do? I didn't really have... The fight scene that I have, that just sucked because I was just getting beat up <laughs> yeah that was that I mean she carries the sort of like emotional weight way more than I did I think it was a lot of the stuff at the end uh, without giving too much away just d dealing with the, the the reality that one of my sons is um, not well at all on the inside I think actually that was probably more horrifying than the end is the stuff is maybe that when she realizes that, and it just gets worse and worse and worse. I mean, that would be terrible. Sure. As a mom. Thank you both very much. Yeah, thanks.